Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about makeup products I'm glad I didn't buy. And I've done a couple of videos like this on my channel. Sometimes I focus on eyeshadow palettes, sometimes I have a whole list of things. I wrote them down, so today I think I have like nine or 10 makeup products that I'm glad I did not spend my money on for a few different reasons. Sometimes when a new product is released, I feel like I want to buy it right away. But something that I've been trying to do in 2020 is just wait a few weeks, sometimes a month or two, because sometimes that initial excitement dies down and then on top of that sometimes when the product is released it starts to get bad reviews or you know if I let some time go by I'm able to shop my stash and find something very similar so for whatever reason these are products that I'm glad I did not buy so I hope you guys enjoy today's video if you like videos like this I'm going to link a few channels in the description box below who film very similar videos I don't know exactly who came up with this idea but I love it and I've gotten inspiration from a few of my favorite channels so I'll link them below okay so let's start with something that I almost purchased just a few weeks ago and that is the Kosa Sunshow Moisturizing Baked Bronzer. When this was first released, I feel like it was getting so much hype. People were raving about it on YouTube. I saw a lot of great pictures on Instagram and then even when I was reading through the comment section on my videos, I feel like a lot of you guys said that you were interested in picking it up as well. I was actually planning on buying this during the Sephora VIB sale, but they were out of the shade that I wanted, so I didn't end up buying it then and then after a few weeks went by, I was actually glad that I didn't pick it up. So they described this one as a super creamy weightless bronzer that gives your skin a warm glow. And lately I have been reaching for more warm toned bronzers. That wasn't really something that I liked even a few months ago, but I feel like my bronzer preferences have changed a little bit. The reason why I'm glad I didn't buy this is because after the initial hype died down, I saw quite a few reviews where people were describing this as a very orange bronzer, especially if they picked up the lightest shade, which is what I would have gone for. And then I even saw people saying that it had a ton of shimmer in it to the point where it actually looked pretty glittery on the skin. And while I don't mind like a small amount of shimmer, I don't want a full on glittery bronzer. When I was on Sephora's website, a few people were saying that it had a really strong scent and then some people said it had a lot of fallout. And I know everyone kind of has different experiences when it comes to products, but I think the cons were cons that I knew I wouldn't like and I couldn't really look over. The other reason why I'm glad I didn't buy this is I actually got the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Bronzer in my BoxyCharm for May at the beginning of May, which was like right after the Sephora VIB sale or right around the same time. And I have been loving that bronzer. It's actually... It actually performs in a way that I thought the Kosas bronzer would. It's very blendable. It's a little bit more warm toned. It does have some subtle shimmer, but I've been wearing it every single day. So I'm glad that I did not purchase the Kosas one because I got the Too Faced one in a subscription box. So it's not technically shopping my stash, but I didn't have to spend any additional money to get that one. And I've been loving it. It performs really well. I'm also glad that I skipped over the new Fenty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blushes and Bronzers. I've actually heard really good reviews on these products and I feel like the majority of the reviews that I watch are very positive. I think the main complaint that I hear about the blushes would be that the pan size is a little bit small, but it doesn't seem like you really need a ton of product to get good color payoff. So unless you're using it every single day, I can't imagine you'll go through it super quickly. So the reason I'm glad I didn't buy these is not because I don't think they would work for me, but because I just don't use cream products as much as I tell myself I'm going to. I have a couple of formulas in my collection that I like, like the Flower Beauty Blush Bombs, and then the Natasha Denona Bloom Palette has a couple of creams, but typically, when I add a new cream product to my collection, even if I enjoy it, I won't end up reaching for it more than powder products in my collection. I think when a new cream product or a new cream formula is released and everyone gets excited, I just want to join in on that excitement because I am excited for people who get the chance to purchase more creams because I know that companies tend to release powder products overall. But I think when it comes down to my personal preferences and what I truly reach for, it's not usually cream products. So I think I'm going to put a hold on purchasing a additional cream products and just kind of embrace the fact that I love powders. The Natasha Denona Mini Bloom Blush caught my eye as soon as it was released. This is such a gorgeous color and Natasha Denona blushes are so great. I do have a couple in my collection that I really enjoy and I don't doubt that I would have really loved this one if I did purchase it. And I think the fact that it was a mini blush was kind of pulling me in, but in the end, I am glad that I skipped over it. First of all, I have a good amount of shimmery blushes in my collection. How many shimmery blushes 
matches do I need? I might not have this exact color, but I have a couple of colors that are similar, and if I kind of mix them together, I'm sure that I could achieve something very similar on the cheeks. I also feel like as much as I love glowy and shimmery blushes, I haven't been reaching for them that much over the past few months, and I have been dealing with a lot of texture and skin issues, and even now that my skin has cleared up quite a bit, I feel like I'm still kind of on the matte blush train or I just skip blush altogether. And that's not to say I won't go back to loving shimmery blushes because I'm sure I will. I just, I love a good glowy blush, but you know, that being said, I would have purchased this blush and maybe not reached for it a whole lot over the past few months. And like I said, I have other shimmery blushes in my collection. So as gorgeous as this is, and I'm sure I would have used it, I just don't think that I needed it in my collection as much as I felt like I did when it was first released. Unlike the blush, initially I wasn't super drawn to the Natasha Denona Mini Retro Eyeshadow Palette. I feel like when this was first released, it was super eye-catching for a lot of people, and it is a pretty palette, so I could see why people would be really drawn to it, and it wasn't until I saw swatches that I was a little bit more drawn to it. So when I saw swatches and I saw people using it in review videos, I thought about buying it. Again, I almost purchased it during the Sephora VIB sale, but I'm glad I didn't. When I do consider a new palette these days, I really try to take a look at every single individual shade in the palette and ask myself how often I'll use it, and if there are multiple shades in the palette that I won't use super often, I skip over it. When I look at this palette, I mean, it only comes with five shades, but I just didn't think I would end up reaching for the gray tones very often, so that's 40% of the palette. Because of that, I knew that I didn't need this palette, especially because I did feel like I would be able to duplicate the pink shadows. I love pink eyeshadows, so I feel like I have a pink eyeshadow in every single one of my eyeshadow palettes, or the majority of them. So I did end up skipping over this one. Sometimes when it comes to mini products, they almost pull me in a little bit more because I'm like, well, it's not as expensive, it's nice to have a mini, and I do think mini products are great, especially when it comes to cheek products or eyeshadow palettes because very rarely do I actually hit pan on full-sized powder products. But just because it is a mini or it is a great deal, I mean, that's still $19 for a blush or $25 for a palette. And when it comes down to it, do I really need to add another blush or another palette to my collection if I won't end up reaching for it all the time? And the answer is, usually no. So, you know, when it comes down to it, it's probably better just to save that $19 or that $25 or put it towards something that I really want and I know I'll use often. It's kind of the same case with the Melt Cosmetics Vita palette. When Melt first released this palette and the Morte palette as a collection, I thought this collection was so stunning. And I love colorful shadow, and I feel like the eyeshadow palette releases at the end of 2019 didn't really catch my eye until this collection was released. So I did think about buying both of them, but I knew that I wouldn't end up wearing enough shadows to justify having both in my collection because Melt palettes are a little bit more expensive. These are $58 each, although the Vita palette recently went on sale for half the price. So again, I kind of revisited the idea of purchasing it, but when I look at this palette as a whole, I just know that I won't get enough use out of it. I used to have this completionist mentality when it came to makeup. Like I had to have all of the naked palettes or all of the chocolate bar palettes. And I feel like sometimes that still kind of comes up. So, you know, because it was on sale, I was like, maybe I'll just complete the duo, grab this one, and I can use them together. But I kind of have to like snap myself out of that mindset because, you know, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Just because something is in a collection or in a set doesn't mean that I need all of the collection or both products in the set because they might not work well for me. But I do feel like that kind of sneaks up on me every once in a while. Speaking of that completionist mentality, I used to feel the same way about ColourPop palettes just in general. I felt like I wanted to have all of them and just have the entire ColourPop collection. And for a while I did when they were just releasing them a little bit more slowly, like back in what was it, like 2017 when they released their first palette and then a few months later they did a second palette. I just loved their formula, but obviously I came to realize that was not sustainable. I did not need to purchase every single palette they came out with. Obviously they haven't released a lot of palettes this year because they have been closed and I think now they're just kind of catching up on older orders, but there was one palette that did appeal to me. That was the All Things Equinox palette. So this one is an Ulta exclusive palette. They actually released this back in March or maybe the very beginning of April. There were two mini collections that they released at Ulta and I did have the other collection. I did get it in the mail as PR. That one was the 
She's Got Solstice palette, which was really beautiful. There was kind of a new formula in there that I was really curious to try out, but I did think about purchasing this one in addition because these are like my colors. I love muted pinks and purples and ColourPop does make my favorite formula. So typically I know that I'm going to like a palette just based on the formula and looking at the colors online, but I have to say I'm glad I skipped over this one because I feel like I have been shopping my stash quite a bit this year and I've pulled out some of my older ColourPop palettes. And I know people always say that ColourPop repeats the same color stories over and over and just kind of does a new palette. And there is some truth to that. There is a chance that you can kind of pull out some of your older palettes and create looks using them that you would create with that palette that's kind of on your wish list. So that's something I have been trying to make more of an effort to do. It's tough because I love eyeshadow palettes and like every single palette that ColourPop releases appeals to me. But when it comes down to it, I'm sure that I'm able to kind of find similar shades within my existing ColourPop collection. So I am glad that I skipped over that one just because as pretty as it is, I know that I didn't need it. I typically prefer full coverage matte concealers, so I can't say that the Tarte C Hydro Sealer Concealer initially caught my eye, but I will say that when I was on the Sephora website the other day, I saw that they had a mini version of it, so I considered picking it up because I do feel like my makeup preferences are always changing, and even though I have a certain type of concealer that I love to reach for, I'm not opposed to trying other formulas. I actually clicked on it to read the reviews because as much as I watch YouTube videos and I love watching reviews, I do like reading the reviews reviews on the Sephora website or the Ulta website as well just to see what people are saying and this actually got terrible reviews. A lot of people were saying that this creases horribly which is something that I do try to avoid in new concealers because I do have under eye wrinkles and I feel like the majority of concealers do crease on you at least a little bit but people were saying this creased almost instantly so immediately that kind of made me write it off. The other thing that people were saying is that it doesn't really conceal anything and actually if you are planning on trying this one do yourself a favor and skip the mini because the mini concealer only comes with it comes with one seventh the amount of the full size concealer and it's almost half the price the mini is ten dollars the full size is twenty four dollars but again you only get one seventh the amount of product so that's actually a terrible deal in terms of value even if it did get really good reviews and it sounded like a good product becca highlighters are just my favorite in fact the only highlighters that i've really been wearing lately are the becca Shimmering Skin Perfectors in Champagne Pop and Opal. And I almost picked this one up. This is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Own Your Light. Let me just say, if this came in a mini, I totally would have purchased this because I do love the color and I don't doubt that I would be able to get a lot of use out of this product. The problem for me is that I just don't need another full-sized highlighter, especially a $38 highlighter. I actually put the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector in the shade Champagne Pop in my project pan this year. You guys, it's June and I was using it today and I still have not hit pan on it. And I've had that highlighter in my collection for years at this point and I do use it fairly often. I'm just not super heavy handed with highlighters. So, you know, it just kind of reinforced the fact that highlighters last forever in my collection. And that's why I do like doing project pans. They always remind me just how long a product will actually last and how long it takes to use it up or hit pan on it. That has definitely been a good reminder to me that I don't need to purchase a lot of full-size highlighters because I can't even hit pan on the one that I use pretty much every single day. I do remember talking about the Milk Makeup Kush Triple Brow Pen in a Purchase or Pass video. I couldn't decide if I should pick this up and I think I said I was going to wait for reviews before deciding. Well, I have read some reviews on this and in the end, I'm glad that I didn't buy this one because initially I thought it, that it might be a good alternative or just like a product very similar to the Urban Decay Brow Blade, which I love. That one helps you create really hair-like strokes but that pen is shaped a lot differently than this one. The Urban Decay Brow Blade is like a super thin liquid liner pen, and I feel like that flexibility does matter when you're creating hair-like strokes because it doesn't look like you're using like a thick marker. And one of the reviews, actually a lot of the reviews, were saying that this product made it look like you were taking a Sharpie to your eyebrows, which is like my worst nightmare because I swear my brows used to look like that. I swear I used to get comments all the time where people said it looked like I 
sharpened my brows on and I would get really defensive, but looking back, it definitely looked like that. So Sharpie brows are like the last thing that I want these days. And then I also read some reviews saying that this product dried out very quickly. Like a few people were saying after a few uses, it wasn't working. And this is what, a $22 brow product. So I'm just glad I didn't take take the chance on it. The last products that I'm glad I didn't buy would be the Huda Beauty Pastel Obsessions Palettes. They released three of these for $29 each. I still haven't tried anything from Huda Beauty and I am interested in trying one of their eyeshadow palettes at some point. And there are so many that appeal to me and I thought about trying these because they do look really pretty. Truthfully, I don't wear pastel eyeshadow as much as I would like to. I think that's something that I typically reach for during the spring and obviously you can wear pastel eyeshadow anytime of the year, but I usually do kind of follow seasonal makeup trends. So when summer rolls around, I'll reach for like golds and bronzes and more intense color. I feel like when I do wear colorful eyeshadow, it's usually very bright, very intense rather than something a little bit more muted that typically comes in a pastel palette. I do have some of ColourPop's pastel palettes like Meant to Be. They also have like that light purple one. And as much as I like those, I don't feel like they are my most used palettes. And when I do a pastel look, it usually ends up looking pretty much the same every time. So it is nice to have those ColourPop palettes in my collection because I do reach for them, I do enjoy them, but I don't think I wear pastels enough to feel like I need to run out and purchase a $29 pastel palette. My $12 ColourPop ones do the job for me, so eventually I might end up trying a Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette because I do hear great things, but I'm glad that these weren't my first ones because I just don't think I would have used them enough. So those are all of the makeup products I'm glad I did not buy this time around. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comment section below if there are any products that were on your wish list that you skipped over and now looking back, you're glad you skipped over them, whether it was due to a bad review or another reason, I would love to know, but I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.